And then we just go right into how we're going to talk about collars. Okay. <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to What's the Safe Word? I'm Amp. I'm Mr. Christopher. And this week we're going to talk about collars. We're, we're going to have people are calling in and... <laughs> Hello? Yes. Is your refrigerator running? No. No, it's not. You better go catch it. <laughs> the collar, like a phone. Oh, God. Did you just now get that? <laughs> yes. Oh, help me. So let's start out by you telling me what is a collar in the BDSM sort of aspect. I think collars have many different roles for different people. It can signify a relationship. It signify how someone is either subservient or controlling someone else. But mainly it's just a sign or a symbol of your devotion to someone. Sure. And in that, would you say that a collar is always a physical, like, no, I think you could have uh, collars. I mean, if you wanted to be even subtle, you could do a wristband. That was many just like wedding rings, you know. A ring. A ring. A wristband. A bracelet. Tattoo. tattoo. Branding, maybe even. Branding. Yeah. Don't get too excited. I kinda like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's forever. But who wears a collar? Usually, it's the sub who wears the collar, and at top is the key holder. So either that's being a master or the dominant in the relationship. So the history behind collars is actually pretty diverse and pretty vast, um, depending on who you ask. We look in the history books, ruffs, which are those ruffly kind of gothic, Elizabethan. Elizabethan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so some people will draw lines back to that. They'll even draw lines back to chokers of that age because it was seen as a symbol or a gift that a man would give a woman, or it might symbolize their, their status within culture itself. Okay. Fast forward a bit in, in the history, and you'll see that Native Americans used collars and chokers and even like animal bones within their collars to kind of signify a spiritual, kind of that hierarchy within their culture. And then if you come over to America, a lot of people will say that collars and the BDSM aspect come from how we used to use collars on slaves or servants. Sure, and then after World War II, early 50s, old guards started doing protocol. I prefer guard classic myself. <laughs> it became a master or slave kind of recognition. And the term old guard, it refers to that style of protocol BDSM, where it's very, very strict rules and guidelines. And evolving from there, we have collars today that can be anything from a dog collar that you pick up at PetSmart to a cable collar that you lock on to your sub or puppy or servant, slave, whatever you're going to call that submissive. So with the many histories out of the way and kind of where we get our rules for collars and where they've derived from, where do you see and how do you kind of interact with someone who's wearing a collar at a bar? Now, I, I'm not afraid to talk to someone wearing a, a collar, but I am respectful. I may ask who owns the key or who owns that collar, and I'd let the boy or whoever's wearing it tell me. I would be respectful because I know he's already got a key holder and a significant other. And so, a lock on a collar, what does that mean to you? I think a lock symbolizes a real commitment and ownership, especially if the boy or sub wears it. Never touch somebody's collar. So a collar is essentially a symbol of someone's relationship from given from a dominant to a submissive. Locks aren't always on, but if you see a lock, that obviously means that there is some sort of relationship of some kind. But you never want to touch a I collar. I right? never touch a collar. That's kind of disrespectful uh, to the person wearing it and the person who owns the key. You can admire it, and you can ask, may I touch it? And they can decide if you can touch it. Uh, because, I mean, that's, it's almost like a wedding ring in that regard. Like, you don't like grab someone's hand and like try and take their wedding ring off their finger, right? I don't normally know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sacred to the person wearing it. Correct. So it's very personal. And I think it's just a good common like standard to say, oh, that's a very nice collar you have there. What does it mean? It's a great conversation though. It's a great conversation starter. And yeah, I mean, you, can, you can open up the conversation, <laughs> I guess. I thought he's been correcting my grammar all day. Well, there's one way to say it, and then there's your way to say it. <laughs> Which is the right way, correct? Correct. <laughs> Good puppy. <laughs> but what types of collars are there out there? The basis that, that collars start out as is one called a collar consideration. That's where we start. That's you, yeah, you had a rope collar that didn't have a padlock on. You would take it off if you 
needed to. I put it on you when you were with me. It was something that allowed us both to have a say in negotiations. Yes. It allowed for both of us to just kind of feel comfortable and kind of test the waters. After the collar consideration is a training collar. The training collar I'd put on you uh, during events and take it off after events when you had to get back on the plane and fly home so you didn't wear it 24 seven. But it was, a, it was still a progression of us and our collars and our negotiating and our bond. And then after that is where you bring in a formal collar. And, that's, and then we discussed what kind you wanted because mm -hmm. you had to wear it all the time. Yep. Um, and people, when they get into real life, sometimes they're hesitant about wearing one to work. Mm -hmm. So you have to come up with one that's appropriate for both of you. Not everyone gets into that phase and that step and that situation. And so there are other kinds of collars. For those that don't go for the, the formal collar avenue, they might wear a casual collar. And for casual collars, that could be something that's for fashion. That could just be something for comfort. Uh, it's not locked on because a lock would indicate that you're in some sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. For some people, there's also what, what are called identity collars. It's a part of their identity. Identify as a pup. Mm -hmm. or, yes. And let other people know that you're, you know, you're kind of into BDSM. Maybe you're looking for a handler, a sir, a master. But my favorite kind are play collars. You know what a play collar is? I do, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> so play collars are very functional, um, but they might just last for one scene. You're wearing it so long as that scene is happening. And regardless what kind of make your collar is, I think that there is always a certain level of safety that you have to take for yourself, not only physically, but emotionally, because those collars do come with a lot of feelings. It also puts a sub in a submissive mode, whether it's a leather play collar or a chain collar that has um, a meaning behind it. And that feeling makes them feel owned, happy, proud, but there's a lot of emotion that comes with that. But even when in uh, those moments when I took off the chain collar, when we were done with an event, before you had uh, this collar, mm -hmm. how, did, how did you feel? sad you you're leaving someone and something behind and you know that it, it, there's more in the future and you'll you'll get back to that feeling but at the moment you're just like well oh, that's, that's sad it's like it's like coming down from just a really fun weekend you know sure that's for a weekend but did you uh, feel naked did you? yeah that's a good way to put it I think like a part of you is missing yeah uh, I, and if I'm ever taking my collar off to do a shoot or something that, a little more professional that just isn't appropriate, you know, I'll just, you know, randomly we reach up and it won't be there and I'll, I'll have a second of a freak out. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> and on that point, as far as taking a collar off, if it's something that's ending indefinitely, say you're coming out of a relationship with someone. The, or the relationship has shifted. I think that it's important to say that there's, there are other collars out there. Mm -hmm. um, don't get so fixated on the collar being the, the key to that relationship because yeah. if that's the only thing that you're worried about, the relationship's already failed. But every relationship fails until it doesn't. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if this relationship and this collar isn't working, it's going to end until it doesn't because you found the relationship that works for you. But it's a two-way street. A collar is both given and earned. And it's not something that you just throw at someone because, hey, you're cute, like, no, put, put some this on. put some thought into it. Mm -hmm. you know, don't just, it has a lot of meaning, so just don't color every boy you play with. So while every relationship looks different and we may look happy on the outside, <laughs> We've been at this for two years almost, and we are not going to be the same relationship that you have. And whether it's a training collar or a formal collar, always have a safe word. Today's safe word is... Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> padlock. Because, like a good formal collar, a padlock is made of metal and it's really hard to pull or, like, yank off. So like a collar, we've come full circle. <laughs> We're ending the episode. Thank you so much for being on, Daddy. Of course. Leave a comment down below of anything you want us to talk about next time. Maybe you've had a good experience you want to share. What can they do down, down there? Oh, you can like it. You can hit it real hard. You can hit it really hard. I hit that all the time. Wait, me or the thumbs up? <laughs> Both. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time on What's a Safe Word. Bye! Good job, good job, good job. I'm missing my Daddy needs a collar too. <laughs>
choke color on you. What? 